Hi, it's Marilyn here from Cotton and Chocolate Quilt Company, and today I'm really excited to show you about how to machine piece your um, English paper piecing. Yes, I'm talking about machine piecing, not hand piecing. I'm going to show you how to do it today. Okay, so um, first you are going to turn your pieces onto your paper piecing. So today I'm doing hexagons, but you can do it with any of your paper piecing. So if you want to know how to do it by glue, check out my other YouTube video video that I showed you how to glue turn it with your sew line glue pin. So you have to have it on your paper to get started. Now this is my arsenal. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to put your wild eye 100% um, nylon thread on the top. It's going to load it on top of your machine. And your bobbin I load it with my DMC machine embroidery thread. It's the th same thread that I hand piece with. It's 50 weight cotton, but it's a two ply instead of a, th a three ply, so it's finer. That's going to keep you from seeing that thread on the top of your piece. My other item that I use are needles. Schmidt's Microtech Sharp Needle Size 7010. This is a finer needle and it's going to hide the look of that that uh, machine piecing stitch so that it's going to really keep people from seeing that you have needled the top of this piece together. All right, so check this out. Thread in the bobbin, thread on the top of your machine, needles. That's my arsenal to make it happen, all right? So now you are going to use an open toe applique foot in your machine. If you're a Bernina user, that's a number 20 foot, okay? You might have to adjust your tension on your machine to pull that tension to the bottom so you don't see that thread coming on top, up top, but that finer thread will help you. If you're an Aurifil user, use your Aurifil thread. That will work also, all right? Let's get going. For me, I've got to put my glasses on so I can see. Some of you can relate to that, right? All right, so let's get going. You're gonna set your machine to a zigzag stitch. I'm using a really small zigzag. On my Bernina, the length is 1.4, width is 1.6. It's a small stitch, all right? You might have to adjust it off a little for your machine, but that's a good place to get started. You're gonna put both hexagons under your machine, set them right under that foot. Match them up, set it right under your foot, and you're gonna take a couple stitches forward just to see where you're going and make sure that you're catching both sides on each of the hexagons and then I like to work with my needle down so I'll set my needle in the down position and I'm going to back up to lock it in place and then when I'm sure that everything is matching the point up front then I'll move I'll sew forward and just hit zigzag on each end, and it's as easy as that. When I get to the end, I'm gonna lock my stitch by going in reverse. Because I'm using nylon thread on top, I do wanna make sure that I lock that stitch. Now, the great thing about this is you can chain piece, just like your regular sewing. So I'll put that next hexagon right together. I'll just keep sewing. Check it out, isn't that great? But I do have to lock that stitch, so back up, reverse it. Make sure that your point is matching up front and keep piecing, go forward. I know, it's as easy as that. Back up, lock it, and I just chain a bunch of them. Keep going and going and going. Okay, when you've chained as many as you need, I, and I like to keep my needle in the down position while I'm working and pull it out. You're wondering about these snippers. They're Fiskars, they're wonderful. They're spring-loaded so that it's easy to snip them, but they're a little bit rounded on the point so that I don't actually clip through my fabric by mistake. Some of you have been there with me, right? Okay, clip these all off. If you have any fabric that's lifted like I just did there, just get out your handy sew line, sew line pen. Glue it down. Okay, so to make a chain, if you're going to make anything that's chain-pieced, You'll just lay these out and chain them together. So look at the pillow that I've made here. This is chain piece together. Six pieces. This is just a little charm pack. Isn't that a cute little pillow? So it's 42 pieces from a charm pack, chained together and then zigzagged on top. I made this in an hour. Simple as that. If you look at the big quilt here, this is from a layer cake. It's about 430 pieces. 
I piece this together in six hours, believe it or not, and that's all machine piece. Uh, one and a quarter inch hexagons. I know, right? Isn't that amazing? Okay, so you can do it too. Now, to make a flower though, you need to make three pairs. Okay, so see my flower? Yep, right there. Okay, so you're gonna put those in pairs, and there's your flower. So let's put it together, where you're gonna put your first set of petals to your center. All right, so there's my center and my, and my petal. I'm again going to match that together. I'm gonna to take a first, the first couple stitches forward, and then if I'm hitting both sides of my hexagons, I am, so I'm gonna back it up. And then make sure that your point is matching. So the key here is to hit the hexagon to each side and then make sure your point is matching. When I get to the corner, I'm gonna pivot and then I'm gonna make sure the next corner is matching. If it's not, adjust your hexagon a little bit. Okay, pivot out, hit the next inch, end, and then back up and lock it. Okay, you're gonna pull this hexagon set out Cut your thread and then you're going to add your next pair. This pair goes right here. You're going to put it under your machine, match it up. Again, make sure that you're hitting each hexagon, back it up. Make sure the end point is matching. And look at how fast this goes. Pivot. Match up the next point. So the corner, pivot, match the next point. Hit each end. Back it up to lock the stitch. And now I only have one more side to match. Look at how fast this is going. And those of you that have done it by hand, like I have for many years, know how quick it is. If you have any side that's come up, you can just fold and glue that down. And then you have one more side to make. Again, I make sure that I'm hitting each side, back it up to lock that stitch. Make sure the points match, and it is. Make my way along the top. I hope that you're saying this is amazing, because that's what I'm thinking. Pivot at the next corner, sew along this side, pivot at the next corner, and I'm at the end, back up to lock my stitch. And you can see that in a very short amount of time, I have my hexagon flower. Amazing, right? Okay. So how do you get the paper out? You're thinking, yes, I have sewn through a little bit of the paper. If this is all I'm doing, if I'm taking a flower and applicating it to a background, which I often do, I do have to press it. I have nylon thread in, but don't worry, it's not gonna melt. But I do take my best press. I put a spritz of best press on this. Caught cotton setting on my iron and I iron it, cool it off. You're gonna turn it over. Then I'm gonna lift this edge. Just lift this up and then your paper starts pulling out and there you go your paper pulls out really easily and you can use it over you can see a little I don't know if you can on camera but you can see a little bit of the edge here and it's perforated I can still use it over a couple of times of course it gets a little more beat up machining you know what I'm okay with that these papers aren't that expensive a little more than a fat quarter and girls how many fat quarters do we have sitting around that we haven't used, right? Okay, we won't talk about that. But pull out all your papers, and then I press it from the back to make sure all that fabric's behaving on the back side. I don't cut down my excess fabric. It's not gonna bother me because I'm machine quilting. If you're gonna hand quilt, then you probably wanna cut that excess down a little bit. And you have a perfect piece flower, and it looks gorgeous, and you hardly see your stitching. All right, now, if you're gonna add another round around, like I have here, if I do want, want to add a round of white, then I do want to keep that paper in and add my next round around. And then I can take those center papers out, just like I would do with my hand piecing. Now, if you want to remember how to do this, I've done it for you in my technique sheet. A reminder of how I glue. My setup guide, right here, set up your machine. This is your reminder, a reminder of how you um, piece it together in pictures, how you finish it, 
And then my little guide, whatever size hexagon you're going to make, this is a size square that I cut. It's all here for you. They're only $5. And you can get all of these tools in a starter kit. I have a deluxe starter kit here that has all the goodies in it with uh, everything, all the tools that you see here from the thread, the needles, the pens, and um, the technique sheet in a bag in this starter kit as well as a basic starter kit as well. And they're available on our website at continentchocolate.com. So come check it out. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.